2018 Audi Q5 T 2.0 or 2.0 T, I'm not sure which one it is. It's running, old original condenser, front end collision, just charged it up, 525 grams YF refrigerant. And let's see how this one's running, what normal pressures and temperatures look like. So here we are, oh, it's dropped out. Okay, turn it back on, there we go. So you see your high side and low side pressure, you see your superheat, your subcooling, ODB, outdoor bulb temperature, taken from our thermistor right here where the air is going over, your suction line temperature, your liquid line temperature. How have we been running for the last few minutes? So we're using the field piece software that's integrated with the field piece unit there. So our pressure, our temperature has been staying right around 39 degrees. You can see minute one right here, minute four. I didn't turn this on until it was already running about five or six minutes and then I booted this up. So we're already like into minute 12 or so or more. And we're dead flat steady on our temperature there's no off and on there's no cutting in and out there's no up and down it's just smooth uh, our outdoor temperature is being taken right here on this one on on this software right there and we got to say it's actually 50 some degrees out here getting a little bit of roll around of the heat of the engine coming up here adding a little heat on that one and if we look at our pressures our pressures have been pretty rock hard, 33, 33, 33.8. And our high side pressure, 115, 115, dropped a little bit to 112 there. And it's saying 112, 113, it's like it notched down because as the fan or the variable displacement compressor with its dwell duty cycle has notched back a little bit and cut down the displacement of the compressor and you'll get that sharp drop off. If it's not the fan, that has dropped down in speed then it's the compressor that has dropped down on displacement this is not a variable speed compressor it's a variable displacement compressor and that's the overall what you get here that is normal for this vehicle under these conditions if you've seen all my other videos you've seen some vehicles under the exact same conditions right next to each other operate very very differently at extremely different pressures and temperatures that's it for today. Oh, and I'm looking for a known leak on this one. So this had the old condenser in there. And there's a leak right here. And even though this is collision work, it has nothing to do with the collision. I was curious what size that must be a real slow leak. So, you know, I put UV dye in it and I break out the UV light and I look for an obvious, you know, a little sign that I can find. It passes that test, even though we know there's a leak and there's UV light circulating the UV dye circulating, there's no obvious leak. Then I break out the leak detectors. This has nothing to do with what I'm getting paid with or anything in that condenser. Even if I did spot a real, real, real small leak, the insurance company is not going to replace that as part of the accident. It has nothing to do with it. But I always like to test my equipment, my methods, and see what kind and what size of leaks are deemed acceptable, not acceptable. I like to find out sometimes i will pick up this leak with an electronic leak detector but nothing with the uv dye sometimes the ultrasonic leak detector will find it this might not find it that might not find it sometimes none of those will find that leak but if i get simple old bubbles out and i squirt some bubbles on there all around there and i let it sit turn it off for a while all of a sudden a few bubbles will start coming out and then the visual of bubbles will find it but there'll be no uv dye at that time of testing but the bubbles found it but something else didn't find it but only after sitting and going through temperature change and pressure change a few little tiny bubbles start coming out and no matter how hard you look you can see right where the bubbles come out and you know you have uv dye in it and no dye comes out so there's all these different scenarios and the only way you're going to test yourself and improve yourself is by unnecessarily you need to hear that word testing repeatedly with different methods of testing on the same leak when you absolutely know there's a leak go after it with different equipment and prove which one finds it and which ones don't that's the only way to improve yourself yes that takes time and usually if you're an employee under the gun and there's a lot of work 
and you have to pump out the numbers because you got to hit a bonus or a certain level every day, you don't have time to do that. I have time to do that. See you guys later.